We're about to show you how to set up your entire Go High Level CRM in less than 10 minutes. Now, I don't have a lot of time here for an intro, so we're just gonna dive right in. If you're not familiar with Go High Level, it is one of the most sophisticated CRMs on the market, and if you've heard otherwise, they're wrong. This CRM literally does everything. Everything is from conversational AI, sending text messages, creating calendars, creating landing pages, posting websites, it does it all. So let's go ahead and dive in, in order of priority. Right when you get the account, the first thing you're gonna need to do, and this is what we call a sub account, so this is the account that you're actually utilizing for your business, you're gonna to go to settings, and you're gonna to want to go to phone numbers and do something called A2P verification. As long as you have some business information, it's actually a pretty easy process. You just wanna make sure you can find a tutorial on YouTube very quickly. It'll take you maybe three to five minutes to submit. Once that gets approved, you can purchase as many phone numbers as you want on the account. Step number two, you need all of your calendars in place. This is gonna be where you, where you accept appointments from people. So you go to settings, you're gonna to go to calendars, and now this is gonna be dependent upon what you want to use the calendars for, whether it's maybe after the sale, you have an onboarding calendar, maybe you have an introduction call for when people first come into your pipeline, maybe you have a strategy call where you jump on a Zoom call with them or they come into your facility, however it works. You wanna create all the calendars that you're gonna need. You go up here, you go to new calendar. I'm a fan of round robin calendars because most of the calendars that you are going to need, you can add multiple people to best case scenario if your business continues to scale. So for example, if you have an onboarding specialist and you get to the point where you're signing up too many people, eventually you're gonna need two, three, four, five onboarding specialists. And we're gonna want to assign those people to the calendar as well. So, and then we can organize it in order of priority or availability on the calendar, etc. But how this works, and I'll just give you an example, once you create the calendar and the slug that you want for the calendar, go to edit, you're gonna scroll down and this is what the calendar settings will look like. Then you can start adding test members, in my case it's a test member, you can start adding members to the calendar more and more. And you can organize in terms of priority. If you make them high priority, their availability comes up first. If you make them low priority, it does the opposite. You can optimize for availability or equal distribution. If you want all of the people on the calendar to get like a round robin assignment, whenever somebody books, you can do that as well. I always say, whenever you're choosing your tech stack or you're building your systems, you want to build it for scale. Best case scenario, if everything that you dreamed of happened and your business doubled tomorrow or tripled tomorrow, would you be able to handle all of the volume coming in with the current systems that you had. If not, reassess what you're currently doing, what your tech stack is, and make it so that best case scenario, when your moment of opportunity comes, you can withstand the volume, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. That's why I use round robin calendars. Now, next thing you're gonna wanna do is create your, go to your opportunity section and you wanna create a pipeline. Your pipeline, at least your first one, is going to be, it's like your client journey pipeline is what we call it. So for example, if we have a lead generation pipeline, which is this one up here, you have your new lead section, your hot lead section, and don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about the automations yet, right? We just wanna make sure that we have the foundation or the framework set up. So new leads, hot leads, this is people who respond to our text messages or emails. If people schedule, we can see that. If they no-show, we can see that. If they're made it to a strategy call, we can see that. And then if we lost the sale or won the sale, we can see that, or if they're a dead lead, right? Maybe we sign somebody up and we want to create a second pipeline for, you know, if the deal was closed and it's contract sent, estimate approved, whatever it might be, right? It's specific to your process and what you want to create it for, but that's what the pipelines are used for. Now, I'm just going to start with one because we're setting up the baseline, right? So I just want to show you how easy it is and how hard you're making it for yourself. So create all the stages that you'd like, put a little bit of thought into this, but not too much. I'm a fan of gathering 70% of the information that you need and then just taking action. A lot of people will make this way too difficult and then it takes way too long to set up. We wanna skip all of that. You can go back and fix the intricate details once you have an operating system that actually works. So once you have these stages here, we're gonna to go to automations and you can start creating automations that are associated with the pipeline stages. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. If we go to pipeline Pipeline workflows, you'll see we have one called hot leads. So if I click on hot leads, I set up an automation here where you can have a trigger and there's so many different options for triggers. This video is not long enough for me to go over all of them. However, if you would like me to create one where I go over all of them, let me know. And then that will trigger an action. And in this case, it's creating or updating an opportunity. This is so that we can move people along in our client journey pipeline without actually having to manually do it. So for example, if someone, a customer replies and the reply channel is SMS, meaning they replied to our text messages, it's automatically going to move the contact opportunity to our hot leads pipeline stage. And we're gonna be able to organize them that way. Now, in the beginning, you probably have a website, 
or hopefully you have a website with a form on it, or maybe you're running ads with forms. Or maybe you're not using forms at all and you need to go to the site section and you need to create some forms for yourself. The number one thing you wanna do is automate the way that you capture leads. Right now, you might be being put in group chats or maybe somebody's just sending you their information. You want to create a link to a form so that they can submit their information. And if the form is connected to here, it's automatically going to create the contact and then you can set up automations where it sends them a text message and an email, welcoming them, asking them a question, whatever it might be. Super simple how that works. And moving them to the new lead stage. You know the time everybody has submitted a form. So that's kind of why we create these. If we go back to automations, I'll show you exactly how that's set up as well. So if I go to, let's say advanced AI. So this is an artificial intelligence that we actually set up. And as you can see, it's triggered by a form. So when a form is submitted, and we could filter this if I wanted to, right? Now, the reason why this is step number one is because anytime a lead comes into our system, we wanna make sure we nurture that lead. So step number one is creating the contact and then updating the opportunity to a new lead. And then we wanna nurture them. So in this case, what we're doing is a form is submitted. And once we create the form, we can do form is and select something specific and then we create the opportunity, lead gen pipeline, new leads, and the opportunity name is contact name. These right here are custom fields. So what it's going to do is populate the person's full name so that you can organize all of the opportunities accordingly. So this is step number one, new lead or form is submitted and you can have multiple different triggers. It can be a Facebook lead form or however you collect people's information. And then it creates the new opportunity automatically. So we know all of the new opportunities that came in. And then whenever they respond to us, it goes to hot leads so that we organize priority. And then when they book an appointment onto your calendar via calendar under link, you're able to see the scheduled appointment stage. Just to go back and show you exactly where that is, if I go to settings and I go to calendars, you'll see the calendars that you created. You click this share button and you can copy the link just like you would in Calendly. And you're going to be able to see that full calendar view right here in the calendar section. Now, another cool thing about this is that you can filter users that are assigned to the calendar or just the calendars in general, but we also have our contact section. This is where we store all of our data. This is where we can add tags to individuals. And if we wanted to, we could send a bulk text message to all of the contacts in our system or send a bulk email to all the contacts in the system as well. But the main things that you want to set up, I'll go over one last feature. If you go to sites, you can create forms, surveys, quizzes, and chat widgets that you embed to your website. If I go to websites, I can actually build full websites. Up here in the top right corner, I click new website and I can create from either, it will give you the option to create directly from a template, kind of like this. And it will show you many website or landing page templates that you can select from. Pick one that you like, and then just edit the information in the images on the page so that it, it is specifically associated with your brand. Now you have something that's gonna funnel the leads into the system, create the contact, create the opportunities, move them along automatically, and you can create your nurture cadences via text message, email, or whatever it might be. Now, there's so many more things that you can do in here. So, and for example, connect your payment portal so that you can keep track of all your payments, uh, memberships, media storage. This is kind of like your own personal Google Drive, reputation for Google reviews, etc. I just wanted to go over the basics because a lot of times people look at things that are complicated and then they get overwhelmed and they do nothing. So what I'm telling you to do is if you're looking for a CRM or you already have one and it sucks, just get go high level and then set up the basics. All you need is to be able to send emails and text messages, set up your pipeline stages, create your conversational AI, and you're good to go. Thank you for watching this video. If you are someone who doesn't want to set this up yourself, it's exactly what we do. If you look in the description below, you'll see a link. You can actually speak with somebody on our team to see you know, maybe if we're the right fit to actually build this thing out for you. However, if you're balling on a budget, we also have a 100% free school community where we have courses, group calls, and stuff like that to kind of walk you through the process as well. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.